so I'm joined by the headmaster, Andrew Johnson. Uh, headmaster, thank you for, for coming um, and, and speaking to me today. I say, come on, I'm in your office. <laughs> Thanks for letting me in. At least you're in the head study and not in trouble. That's, uh, that's always a good one, isn't it? If you're not, not, not in trouble when you're in the head study. Yeah, yeah. Well, well. when I was, I was telling you just before we recorded, yeah. I used to do chemistry lessons uh-huh. in here because uh, Mr. Clough, uh, your predecessor, uh, when I was doing A-levels, decided to take it upon himself to try and improve the grades. It didn't really work for me, but, you know, at least he tried, right? It was a valiant effort on his part. That's great. Exa- exactly. Yeah. I, can't, I can't fault um, yeah. his teaching. Um, let, let's talk about St. Benedict's. Sure. It's, obviously, it's it's quite unique in many ways. What, you know, you, you're, you're uh, an educator who's had a long history of, uh, you know, you, you've taught for a long time. Um, what makes this school unique compared to others you've been at? I think the really strong sense of community, I mean, you know, and, and yes, of course, that, that means partly the people who are in this building from day to day, but it also means the wider community of parents and of all priorians, um, people come back to this place. It helps, I think, as we were saying before, uh, Mark, it helps that we're in London, you know, um, but we're really, really proud to have such vibrant alumni uh, network and associations like, for example, the Old Priorians Rugby Club uh, and, and various other things. And I think, you know, the... The, um, the St. Benedict's Connect platform has helped us to draw people in. We've got lots of people coming back for things like the Careers Fair, for example, uh, coming back to do mentoring of our sick formers, um, and even offering things like work experience, which is absolutely superb for the school. Uh, and we're really, really proud of that community. And I think it's to do with, with the Benedictine ethos, isn't it? It is to do with the fact that, that we're a Catholic community, that actually what we try and inculcate in everybody is that you look out for other people, not just for yourself that actually this faith-based community is all about what we can do for others, not just, not just for us as individuals, um, which, which is important. And actually, you know, that comes on to philanthropy as well, doesn't it? Uh, that actually we've been, building, uh, we've been building philanthropic support, we've been building the development office over the last few years, and we're actually making really good progress. Uh, and it's great that in our 120th year, we're able to try and do something really good for bursaries. And we're trying to raise £120,000 this year, uh, to uh, to help uh, young people who who would be really good uh, uh, pupils of this school, but whose families simply can't afford to send their children here, we want to be able to give them that support. We're doing really well in raising that one hundred twenty thousand uh, pounds. We're really really grateful for the support that we've, we're getting from from across the across the community, from parents, from OPs as well. Really really good that we're we're, we're getting getting so much support from people. Um, we've got a bit more to do, uh, and uh, and we hope that uh, that other people will be able to be willing and able to 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 offer us some support so that we can reach our goal uh, of raising more money for bursaries. Um, and I think if I might, Mark, can I just say something yeah, about what, what what I what I've seen over well over thirty years uh, in 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 education and the benefits that that, that 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 people can get from from having a bursary in a school like this. I mean, the education we're offering here is, is really good, and we know that people go on from St Benedict's to do really well at university and then to get to, to go into um, really good careers uh, and then actually to give back as well. And that's one of the things I think is, is, is really good, as I've just been saying. Um, and we want to be able to offer that opportunity, not only to people who, who can afford the full fees, but to young people who really, really, you know, really benefit from being here, really make a wonderful contribution um, for the benefit, actually, of, of all the peoples here, um, but whose families simply can't afford it. Um, and, and we've been building that, that bursary pot, if you like, over the last few years. Um, we're, we're now able to offer to the right young people, um, really carefully means tested, up to 100% bursaries. In fact, actually 110% because, wow. you know, for some families where they really haven't got any means, we're able to help them with the purchase of school uniform as well. Uh, and that's, that's thanks to the, the, the generosity and the good work that's been done in the development office over, over the last few years. So really, you know, um, it's, it's offering people an opportunity to excel at St Benedict's, to go on and thrive at university, and then to to build very successful careers, and then to give back. Um, and Marcel, you talked about your your career there, 30 years, you've worked across a number of different Catholic schools, quite well-known Catholic yeah. schools. How important do you think bursaries, and being the position you're in, to, to be one of those people who can go and give people bursaries, are they to, to a Benedictine school like St Benedict's? I mean, they're absolutely transformational. I, I saw this, I was head of Stonyhurst, you know, before I came here, and, and I saw it at Stonyhurst as well. What a transformational opportunity that we are privileged to be able to give to, to, to a range of young people. And, you know, the, the only problem is we're not able to give it, get that opportunity to as many people as we would like. And, you know, we're, we're fundraising hard for bursaries, 
uh, and raising more funds for, for bursaries than for anything else, because we really believe that we ought to be able to widen access, we ought to be able to widen that opportunity, you know, and young people who can come in and, and obviously benefit from the teaching, but also, you know, gain huge amounts from being on the sports field and actually contribute to, to, as team players on the sports field, you know, to get involved in, in, in drama, um, to learn a musical instrument, to, to take part in con concerts, uh, to, you know, to do debating or public speaking, whatever, you know, to build those, those soft skills as well as actually to excel academically. Um, so that they're able to, to, to go on and, and do well at university and beyond. And crucially, and this is what sets the Benedicts apart, which is where you started, um, to learn what it is to be in this sort of community where we don't just look out for ourselves, we look out for other people as well, where we're looking to make a contribution for the common good, where we're looking actually to, to engage with other people uh, and, uh, and to see the good in them and help others as well as helping ourselves. What... Um... As you know, I'm quite heavily involved with the rugby club, APRFC, and what often surprises people who either come to the rugby club or, or other people I've met from other areas of my life is how collegiate old boys and girls of this school seem to be. Is this something that's common for, for the other schools you've worked at, or is it a kind of uniquely... I, I think you see, you, see, you see the same sort of elements in, in other Catholic schools. I think it's a very, very much a Catholic school thing, I think, as I've seen in the other Benedictine and Jesuit schools that I've worked in. Um, but I think what is particularly special about St. Benedict is because, you know, people, people tend to settle in London after they've, after they've gone to university, that, that people are, are within, e within easy reach of each other. And therefore, that community that's built at school that in some cases continues uh, while, while people are at university because, you know, people go to groups go to the same university or people keep in touch on the holidays, but which is then very much consolidated when people come back for their working lives in London, is a really strong network uh, that we see. Yes, we see it through the rugby, you're absolutely right, but we also see it through through the support that, 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 that our alums are able to give, um, give, give, give it through careers um, and, and, and you know, work, workplace opportunities as well. I mean, it really is a very, very strong thing. And I don't think I've seen it quite as strong as this in other places. Um, it's 120 years of the school. Um, what does that mean to you as the headmaster to be the one carrying the torch, as it were, on the, on the 120th year? It's great to be here for the anniversary. It's great that we've had so many different events uh, that have taken place uh, during the course of this year. Um, we've still got one or two things coming up. So, for example, uh, we're going to be unveiling our 120th anniversary sculpture uh, that's going to be open in front of the new atrium that we're opening on the Montreal Crescent side. Uh, in a few weeks' time, uh, and it's been really good to have have the sports, uh, to have had to have the opportunities for for special lectures as well. For example, we had a whole school photograph last week. That's quite an undertaking. Um, you know, loads of loads of things that have been going on because it's our 120th year, and um, and we're really pleased to have been able to mark it together as a whole community. Um, there, there might be alumni listening to this who haven't really been in touch with the school very much in the last few years maybe you know they've moved abroad or maybe they've moved to another part of the UK and they've stumbled upon this podcast somehow or another uh, what would your message be to, to those boys and girls uh, or I suppose I should call them men and women maybe yeah. Yeah. Um, who might not have been in touch with the school for a number of years but want to kind of reconnect sure well I think a few things Mark the first is that you always are part of the wider St. Benedict's community. You're always welcome here. We'll be delighted to see you uh, at one of the, the Old Prior and events, for example. Um, but we'd be really pleased if you wanted to, to get back in touch with the school. Um, and certainly um, a couple of opportunities would be um, with the annual dinner and then also for our sports clubs as well. You know, those would be, be a couple of things. And actually also um, take a look at St. Benedict's Connect as well. So uh, an online network uh, of, of all priorities, um, where some are able to gain quite quite you know opportunities and help uh, from their fellow old priorities. So you know take take a look at that as well, but do come back and see us as well. We're hoping to hold the annual dinner once again in the school, and it would be lovely to welcome people back who haven't been here for a few years. Yeah, it's a great event if you haven't been to it. There's loads of old priorities from you know some who left in the last few months and some who've left uh, decades ago. Um, headmaster, you, you've not got many more months left at the school. Uh, you've been at the school through some quite strange times with, with COVID and kind of, it feels like we're on the cusp of another financial crisis. 
What's your when you look back at your time here? What 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 do you reflect on it? How do you reflect on it? What do you what are your thoughts of it? Do you know? I think I think one of the one of the Benedictine virtues is stability, and I think this place has offered great stability. I think through its its tradition, through the way it is, through what it is as a community, as well as I'm not particularly talking about my own leadership, although although I hope, hope we've helped people, but actually stability is so important in turbulent times and COVID was very, very difficult for people, uh, very isolating, uh, very uncertain um, and, and I hope the school was able to be uh, a real rock for people, uh, first of all. And then secondly, yes, we, we, we're also in very uncertain times financially, aren't we? Um, and, um, and all the more important, therefore, that we're able to offer support. Um, we've, we, we have, in difficult financial times, been able to raise funds for to offer hardship support to people who've fallen on difficult times, and I hope we'll be able to continue to do that. And we do need people's support to be able to do that. Um, but it, it's been it's been a, a huge privilege. It continues to be. Uh, I'm not finishing till next summer. It continues to be a huge privilege to lead St Benedict's. As you know, I led Stonyhurst for ten years before coming here. So it'll be seventeen years of headship uh, at the end of um, at the end of this academic year, and um, it, it has been. A huge opportunity, a huge privilege, uh, for which I'm eternally grateful, um, and I'm looking forward to um, perhaps leading more life in a slightly different way, and and having a range of different opportunities that that that, that I'll pursue. I'm delighted that, that my successor, Joe Smith, has been appointed. Joe will do a superb job. He really understands this school. He really knows where we're up to, the, the progress that we've made, uh, and also you know what the challenges might be for the future. So I I think that has got such a bright future, uh, and uh, I will be um, from slightly further. But further away than the moment, I will be looking on um, and and willing uh, the community to succeed from from the end of uh, the academic year. I do just want to say a couple of things, uh, if I might. Of um, course. In conclusion, uh, the the first is this: I really would like to thank all those uh, in the community, all the parents, all the OPs, uh, and and all, all, all other friends of the school who who've already supported us um, in our 120th year and with the campaign that we're running at the moment. I want to thank Brandon, Brandon Grace particularly. Brandon was the voice of our bursary video, a, a, a bursary holder himself, and, and he's, he's given very, very generously of his time uh, in, um, in supporting this campaign. And finally, I'm looking forward to the next 120 years for St Benedict's. You know, we, we've, we've, we've had the, our first 120, let's hope there are many 120s uh, to come and that the school will continue to go from strength to strength. Thank you very much indeed.